I'm Kevin Mamajek, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Okay, so last step before we can actually um, do an analytic or do a query is we need to identify the data in a consistent way, and that is uh, tagging. And so this is probably the most important piece to all of analytics is you need to figure out how to tag things uh, correctly. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. Um, there's a direct tag and an implied tag. It's the implied tags that is the best practice. And I'll kind of show you both. So normally you can go and you know click on a point, say edit tags. I can come in here and I can have several different um, uh, dictionaries open, right? I can have uh, the Niagara Dictionary, which is open by default. I've added the Haystack Dictionary. So if I wanted to add, you know, a, a temperature marker or a tag to this, I can do that. Add the group, and I might want to add sensor, right? This is um, this is doing it the manual way. This is the tedious way. This is the way that um, most people think about tagging, and I want to try to cons you know stop that thinking and show you that there's a much better way. So uh, I'm not one for going through a couple hundred thousand points and, you know, putting little post-it notes on them, right? So my goal is how do I get this to happen automatically? And so there's this implied tags uh, tab here inside the edit tags. And you'll notice that, wow, there's a Niagara implied tags. I added the Haystack library and these magically showed up. So how, how can I get um, my station to automatically apply the correct tags to that point, right? So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm actually going to cancel. So make sure there's nothing up my sleeve here. No direct tags. We want those to appear at the bottom of this list. And so the first thing that you'll need to do is in the palette, uh, you can actually create some rules, right? Some tag rules. So the rule is where we want to go. We want one tag dictionary to rule them all. Not that I stole that from any kind of movie or anything. Maybe that was kind of bad, but. So the goal here is I want to create a rule for space temperature that automatically does that work for me. So in the palette, I can create a rule. Notice there are and rules or always rules. So there's a different type of rule. I'm just going to demonstrate this and rule so that you get the idea and then the rest will all fall into place. But the goal is you want to create a rule you drag that in there, the scope in, I renamed this and rule. So in this wire sheet, I have a couple points and then I have the rule kind of laid out on the wire sheet right here. That's just for convenience to talk to it. Essentially, it is a duplication of this, right? So if we come in here and we look at the tags applied, right? We're going to apply a group tag and then some individual tags. Notice I'm using the Haystack uh, domain. So I'm actually creating a tag rule inside my own tag dictionary. You can have several tag dictionaries running, which is the cool part. So mine is going to apply this rule, and then it's going to stick Haystack tags uh, onto a point based on its name. So most of you, I'm hoping all of you, have naming conventions. So if you look at this point, it's called space something. I have an AND rule that says two things. It's going to look to see if it's a numeric control point. Most likely you guys are going to be doing this against a device, right? So what you want is to kind of fail quickly. You don't want to have Niagara have to go through the entire set of uh, points looking at the different names. You want to kind of give it something to fail quickly on. So I at least took away the majority of the points in my system. I said, hey, it's got to be a numeric control point. Mine is a folder. I would actually go after the device. And then I say, and, since it's a condition and, even though this is or, kind of confusing, but this and says it has to be this numeric control point and it has to be one of these. That or is actually saying or any of the patterns. I did it the long way. Um, so that you can kind of see how it's built out. So essentially what I want to do is I want to say, all right, if the, if it's a numeric control point and in the first thing that I check, I have a wild card and then room temp with a capital R and a capital T and then another wild card. So that is telling me or telling the rule, 
I don't care where room temp is as long as it's inside the name. Go ahead and tag it. The next one is room temperature. It's If it's explicitly called room temperature, tag it. If it's room TMP, space temp, space TMP, space temperature. Uh, you, you see the pattern, right? I can put a bunch of things in this list that looks for different variances of what it might be. So large enterprises love this because they can have one or five different naming conventions that are all pointing to the same type of a point and create a rule that tags them all, right? And then I just tell it what groups I want to add. So I give it the temp sensor and the HS temp and HS sensor. So with that rule in place, all I'm going to do is rename this point to space and I'll call it the first one temp and what you'll see now when we go and look at the tags this has the implied tags temp sensor sensor and temp so when I first figured all this out after tagging manually <laughs> for a long time it was like ha ha right this this makes total sense I could actually create a tag dictionary that applies multiple tag uh, types to just my station, right? And then I can move that same tag dictionary into my supervisor and they're automatically tagged. I can move it to an edge product and they're automatically tagged as long as I follow that naming convention. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's This is the proper way of tagging. It's a little more work up front, but the benefits are, are uh, tremendous afterwards, right? Because I can run that dictionary in many different levels of the Niagara architecture. Here's a, again the wild cards, room temp. So floor one, room 122, room temp, got the tags. Room temp, floor one, 122, it's still the wild card, it got the tags, right? You don't believe me? Go in here, it got the tags, right? So these are really important. I had a, a couple questions on, well, how do I remove case um, within the tag? I had no idea. Well, evidently there's a regex that we can put in here that says it could be a, a lower case or an uppercase space, or a lowercase t, uppercase t, or why not remove type altogether, right? So you can actually go in here and use this um, paren question mark i, which is a, a regex to say, don't worry about any of the upper or lower case. So there are ways of creating some pretty cool tag rules to tag your data so that you can do analytics.